Hey guys, this is Kid Rob speaking, and today we are back in Automation, the car company tycoon game, with a how to. And today's topic is how to tune your exhaust setup such that you get the most out of it for your specific application. And let's jump right into it. And here we are. We have a bog standard 2017 2 liter inline four engine. Nothing special about it whatsoever. And we are going to use this engine to illustrate what kind of basic mechanics are hidden in this panel of selections. First up, the headers. The headers mainly influence flow, but also can give you a little bit of a resonance buff in a certain rev range, where a cast lock don't give you anything because, well, look at them. They, they, they can't resonate with anything apart from uh, a pile of garbage. Okay, uh, yeah, now that that is on uh, out of the way, uh, short cast. Very, very low resonance, uh, as in frequency. It's around 2000 RPM, I think. Uh, tubular is more in the middle, long tubular further down to uh, the high end, and race tubular somewhere around 8000 RPM or so. And uh, yeah, that's pretty good to know, but of course also there are some cost factors and production unit factors in here. And of course you're not supposed to confuse uh, cost with material costs. The material costs of these are pretty irrelevant because it's just steel. It doesn't cost you much. The material itself is irrelevant, but the amount of time and engineering you spend on them is not irrelevant. We're not going to talk about uh, the other exhaust features like single or dual exhaust and bypass valves in today's video. That's uh, not the topic, but uh, rather these three options mainly and how to use your exhaust diameter to check how your exhaust tuning looks. And the most important part about this is knowing that you need to switch to your flow bench in order to see what is going on exactly. So currently we see that at peak power, this value will always be showing at peak power unless you hover over here and get the live values for where you're currently hovering in X, that would be RPM. So in this case, we have a flow reduction of 3% for both exhaust and headers. And I would say that is perfectly normal and uh, yeah, that's, that's decent, especially if you have your fl uh, reverse flow muffler on there and a cat. And you can see now it actually got up. It, this, these don't affect the headers, of course, because they are after the headers. The headers are a bottleneck and then this as a whole is a bottleneck as well. So what are the new mechanics that recently got introduced into this? Well, we have noise reduction, obviously. We have flow reduction and you can see that in the tooltip. The tooltips definitely aren't complete for what I am going to talk about here today, but uh, they, they give you a, a hint. And in here you can see that the maximum power number, that's the, the lowest out of them in the tooltip, uh, is getting reduced by you choosing a catalytic converter. It is most reduced by the two-way catalytic converter that lowers it to 160 whatever units you currently have chosen. Uh, what unit do I, have? do I have here? Horsepower, yes, right, horsepower. So um, that would mean it can reasonably freely flow 160. So if we put this one on and you see, okay, yeah, it reduced the maximum power we had slightly. A three-way is a lot better though. It basically doesn't reduce it at all now nah, two horsepower we're missing two horsepower and this is just because of the flow if you then change your exhaust diameter you can offset that a whole three percent for the two-way catalytic converter then two percent for the three-way and one percent for the high flow that reduction is linearly scaling with how much power you put through it and has its calibration point at the maximum power level displayed that you currently get through your exhaust. So if we put on a high flow three-way exhaust and put it to our current value of, uh, let's see, now ah, that's pretty close, um, like 148, this number, then at that number, at 148 horsepower, we would lose 1% on our total power we are making because we have chosen the high flow three-way catalytic converter. 
if we instead choose the two-way, then at the same value, which now is lower, ah, oh, it's actually scaled pretty well with that, with the overall power loss, um, then that would be 3% lost. Catalytic converters, of course, uh, not only cause you to lose power, but also massively reduce the emission values of your engines. So uh, if you want to avoid higher tax brackets for the cars you produce, better watch out for this. Uh, but anyway, let's move on here and uh, actually talk about the muffling qualities. And these mufflers, first and secondary, are actually quite complicated now too. They seem as if nothing has changed, but that would be wrong. So, uh, the first muffler has a worse effect on the system's efficiency than the second muffler. Also, the first muffler is worse at actually reducing noise. So, if you can avoid it, then don't use a first muffler and only an end pot, uh, a secondary muffler. The baffled muffler has the worst exhaust system efficiency and reduces the exhaust uh, efficiency up to 1.75% once you set it at the value, like the same way as we discussed the catalytic converter. So you will be losing power if you use this one. The reverse flow is not quite as bad, 1.5% and it is slightly better at reducing noise too, but costs a whole lot more. The engineering time, as you can see, is a third as high, like 0.25 to 0.75, and that is measured in months, while the um, power loss, of course, is lower, and the noise reduction actually is higher for the reverse flow. So overall, the reverse flow is a better system if you can afford it. The uh, straight through muffler is of course your sporty variant and only has a power loss of 0.5% compared to 1.5% for the reverse flow. But it only reduces noise by 20% compared to 35% for the reverse flow muffler. What we also need to talk about is the flow reduction. Like when you, when you have it at none here, you see that this will reduce your flow. And for the reverse flow muffler, that is 20%. And actually, the ba baffled muffler is slightly better for that, as you can see. It reduces the flow somewhat less, but uh, yeah, has these other problems with it. So nowadays, the baffled muffler is actually quite a viable option, especially for um, some budget cars. And you definitely can choose it if you want to. So what is the difference between the second muffler and the first muffler? The values I just talked about were for the uh, neutral muffler that doesn't exist. So <laughs> and um, the second muffler actually um, has a lower amplification of the negatives and a higher amplification of the positives. All right, now you ask, well, that, that, is, that is fine and all, but that doesn't tell me anything. Uh, no worries, we are now taking a look at the practicalities of this. So let's say you're making a modern car, 2017 after all, right? So you will have to have some form of muffler because uh, this loudness rating is very, very sporty indeed. Your cat kind of helps you to tone it down a little and the, I assume, standard intakes do so as well. But you do want to use a muffler. So let's go and select the second muffler and put it in reverse flow. And as you can see here, ouchies, on your flow bench, this is turning yellow and it could turn very red as well and you see that straight up from your torque curve. It looks a little strangled, um, but yes. So now you want to determine what the goal is with this engine before you set the actual exhaust diameter. You can have it absolutely free flowing, but that gives you another problem. This actually makes less power. And why is that, Kilorob? Why does an open exhaust make less power? I have heard people talk about back pressure. Yeah, people, people talk also about how torque accelerates cars. And that's nonsense. What you do want to have is a decent exhaust velocity at the points where it matters in the torque curve. And that will give you the optimal resonance phenomena that actually amplify the exhaust system efficiency. Um, we want to set it up not such that you have an 8-inch 
pipe on everything because that actually makes you less power. You want to reduce it such that it is slightly strangled. You see, okay, now, now it's moving up, it's moving up. We make it smaller and it's moving up. Yeah, so that means the speed of the exhaust gas is up there. You're pumping through enough so that the speed of the exhaust gases increases and that means that you start to get resonance phenomena in there which actually help your exhaust efficiency. And you want to decrease the size until you reach maximum efficiency at the place you want it in your torque curve. That could be, let's see, it's still increasing everywhere. So this is the point where you would get maximum efficiency at the high end. And you see we have it set to 175 horsepower right now, which is far beyond how much power we're actually producing, but that leads you to have a non-strangled exhaust. You can see exhaust efficiency is at 98% for uh, the, the latter part of the exhaust. And that is very high considering that we have both a catalytic converter and a secondary muffler. And you cannot get it to 1 to 100% because these components actually reduce your exhaust efficiency like we talked about before. So this would be the tune for the exhaust if you wanted to get the maximum performance out of it. But what about if you want to get the maximum economy out of it? And this is measured between 1500 RPM and 2500 RPM and average there. So you want to have uh, your torque curve as high as possible in these regions while using as little fuel as possible. And you can see here that we currently have at that spot at 2000, that's the center for that, we have with the performance calculation an exhaust efficiency of 99%. So it's very, very free flowing at that point. If we want to get better efficiency down low, we have to make the exhaust gases slightly faster down there, which would mean that when you put more power and thus more air through the exhaust system that you will start strangling it towards the high end, but it will be more efficient down here in this range. So that means if we reduce it by one, you can see ah, the torque curve is actually rising there and it gives you higher exhaust efficiency. We got three more newton meters of torque there and it reduced the point where it reaches the peak um, to a lower RPM value. And we got uh, another 0.4% efficiency out of this. We could uh, go another step, but that is strangling it a lot, as you can see. It makes it a lot more efficient down here. We are now up to 22% efficiency, but that sacrifice is quite a bit of high end. We are now strangling it by 8%. That's not really healthy. I would settle for a happy medium in this case. And you can see how the torque curve towards the high end lifts up when I uh, stop strangling the exhaust too bad. And yep, that is a good compromise, I would say. Maybe not the optimal solution for a super economy focused car where you actually would leave it like this and can strangle it. So don't fear getting these values if you have a purpose for them. If you really have chosen them carefully, like, yes, I do want to have my maximum peak efficiency down there and get the maximum economy out of it. If you are making a luxury car, then you might want to consider using another muffler because the loudness rating of the engine definitely will affect the comfort rating of the car. So what you then can do is, for instance, choose a straight through here I have to open up the exhaust slightly, because otherwise it just kills everything. Um, but you see the loudness rating is now down to 32 from previously 37. If you want to go super, super quiet and actually gain some bonus from using uh, both reverse flow mufflers so that you don't have to engineer it twice, I don't even know if we have implemented that yet, but it will be the case definitely at some point. Uh, then you can choose reverse flow don't forget to up the exhaust again because this is now strangling it pretty bad but we are down to just 29 loudness really nice and quiet the only way you can make it even more quiet is to choose um a turbocharger all right so there we have it these are the standard considerations for what exhaust types to choose 
Because this engine was a little too standard to cover it all, let's just choose the second variant I've made out of this, which is a more performance-oriented version of the same engine. So here we go and we have completely different troubles. Let's uh, have this set up here. So this doesn't look good, does it? Oh my god, yes, very, very strangled indeed. This is not what we want. Uh, this is using a pretty high cam profile and you can see it being limited by the poor exhaust system choices we have made here. In this case, we have opened up the exhaust. We're still using a reverse flow and stuff, but that's not really helping. And that is mostly due to us using headers that are not suitable for this power output we are trying to achieve at 8000 RPM. So uh, yeah, let's take a quick look what the headers do in this case. Always look at your flow bench. And we have the tubular. Oh yeah, much better. Just look at the power curve change. Nine extra horsepower there and the torque curve just shifts so much to higher RPM values and buffs the high end massively. And you can see how or where it's starting to flow limit. So we go here and there. Around 4,500 RPM, it becomes a little bit of an issue with the headers. And if we use tubular, then the same is true at like 5,300. And if we go to long tubular, well, okay. Basically, it didn't change, but the scale changed. <laughs> it changed a lot in numbers. Let's do the comparison again. Another 9 horsepower here and another 9 newton meters of torque as well. Long tubular, it's costly. It's costly, but you still can mass produce them, so it's not too bad. And um, yeah, now that, that seems to be a happy medium for the, for the headers. It's still strangling it a little, little bit, but you can live with that because no one can pay for this oh my god race tubular headers they are so beautiful the pretzel is here i like me some pretzel exhausts but of course we are still using these components here limiting the flow efficiency okay so now we have spent a lot of time on just this panel and you can see how in-depth this actually is or has become rather compared to before where it was a pretty straightforward choice of components now you actually have to use your brain to to pick something and yeah really get it tuned before we wrap up there's another thing i want to mention and that is the special case of having a turbocharger i'm just going to uh, lower up oh. Yeah, we do need this one here. Um, lower the compression so that it doesn't knock. And, well, what a horrible setup. Uh, but anyway, yes. Yeah, so um, if you have a turbo in here, then the resonances of the system are severely hampered because there's a turbo in there. So basically, it doesn't really matter what you do with your exhaust. Apart from that it needs to be as freely flowing as possible because a turbocharger works on the premise of a pressure gradient that is as steep as possible. The pressure gradient drives your turbine. So what you want to do in this case is actually use... Oh shit, still knocking. Um, because we opened up the exhaust, it became more efficient because we increased the exhaust size which made the gradient steeper so it can build more boost and that made it knock. Okay, so yes, as you can see that if you if you lower exhaust size too much, even though we're not outputting that much, 330, it gets limited and larger sizes, even though we are not producing 800 horsepower, still gain you a little bit of performance. So in those cases, you just want to have the highest possible pressure gradient and that is achieved by a large exhaust system. But, of course, you are sacrificing a lot of loudness if you make it very large, so you still need to compromise when it comes to that. I hope you enjoyed, and this was helpful, and see you guys next time!